Hey, hey guys, Drew Sagawa here, and I want to share something with you real quick. Now, John chapter 19 records Jesus cried out from the cross, it is finished. And I want to show this to you here on the display. In John chapter 19, starting from verse 17, it says, And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a skull. That word for skull in the Latin, calvaria. That's where we get the word calvary. So Calvary Chapel is <laughs> skull chapel. Welcome to skull chapel. <laughs> so the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they had crucified him and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. Listen, Pilate knew that Jesus was the king of the Jews. He knew and he heard, I'm sure, the uproar just five days before on what we call Palm Sunday, the day of the triumphal entry, where Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 prophesied that Jesus would be the king coming into the city. Jerusalem was to behold her king. He'd be riding on a donkey. Pilate surely would have seen the swelled masses. He would have been there, would have been very attentive to this Jewish season because there'd be tons of extra people, all this activity going on. Maybe crime would be on the rise. So they want to make sure that everything's going to maintain the peace of Rome, the Pax Romana. And so I'm sure he would have known about it and heard that the crowd cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Maybe he even knew, maybe Pilate knew that Jesus went in the temple sometime shortly after entering into the city as prophesied in Daniel 9 and Zechariah 9 that he'd be riding on a donkey and then they're crying out, receiving him as the king, as the Messiah, Hosanna. And he goes in the temple, he cleanses the temple just like a good king, right? The good kings of the Old Testament, they would cleanse the temple. So he's doing that symbolic act, actually. He did the start of his earthly ministry, now three years later, a second time, cleansing the temple, just like a good king. Pilate knew he had nothing against him. There's no reason why they should hold Jesus. In fact, he wanted to let him go, remember? But he knew the crowd was crying out for Jesus. He knew, well, they're going to take Barabbas. What am I going to do with this Jesus? Crucify him, is what the crowd said. Pilate even tried to wash his hands from the matter. Remember that? So Pilate knew that Jesus is the king of the Jews. He had nothing that he could have convicted him for. He even said, "There's this. I find no fault with this man. I want to let him go. But he knew the high priests, they were jealous that they wanted to kill him. And it was something with Judaism. And so Pilate really had nothing to do that with that. He was the governor appointed over the Jerusalem area by Caesar in Rome. And he knew, like he said, truth, veritas. What is truth? So he, he was stuck in the middle. He knew that he had to kill Jesus. And it was a setup. It wasn't fair. It was a political turmoil that he was in. And so he knew this guy committed no crime. So what did he hang on the cross? What was his crime? The king of the Jews. Very sad. What I have written, I have written. And in verse 23 says, Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to each soldier a part, and also the tunic. Check this out. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. Now many say that this tunic was very similar to the tunic that the high priest would wear woven from one piece it did not contain any seams in it at all very similar to that they said therefore among themselves let us not tear it but cast lots for it whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled which says they divided my garments among them and for my clothing they cast lots therefore the soldiers did these things now there stood by the cross of jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, 
and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, who is that? that's actually John, the guy that's writing this book, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. Now, hey, you know that Jesus trusted John, trusted him so much that he trusted him with his mom, right? You take care of my mom as if she's your mom. And mom, you're losing a son maybe, but you're gaining one with John. Love that. Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Check this out. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on his sop, and put it to his mouth. Look what it says here, quoting John 19, verse 30. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Therefore, because it was a preparation day, that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day. Hey, they had to prepare for the Sabbath to come, it was also a Passover season. They didn't want it to get dark because once the sun went down, hey, it was Passover. So they had to take the bodies and do all the work of taking off the cross, do all the extra work after that and put the bodies away. So, hey, let's make sure that we can get them off the cross. They got to be killed, basically. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and check this out, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified. John is saying, I was an eyewitness. I'm testifying to you. <clears throat> and his testimony is true. I'm telling you the truth. And he knows that he's telling the truth. John, it's like John saying, it's almost funny here, I know that I'm telling you the truth and my testimony is true. Why is he doing this? Look what it says here in verse 35. So that you may believe. May you be a believer in the fact that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, poured out his blood, and hey, check this out. This is when the new covenant was created. And when John quoted Jesus as saying from the cross, it is finished, this action verb is written in what was called perfect tense. So check this out. I'm just reading the quote here. Perfect tense describes an action which is viewed as having been completed in the past, once and for all, not needing to be repeated. Jesus' last cry from the cross, to Tetelestai, it is finished, is a good example of the perfect tense used in this sense, namely it, the atonement, has been accomplished completely once and for all time. Where'd you get that from, Drew? Good question. Now, as seen here in the Blue Letter Bible, you can go to this online, and for that word, it is finished. It's the word tetelestai, and if you click on the right side under the parsing here, the V for verb, the area here circled in red, that's actually where I quoted from. It shows you that that verb, that action verb, it is finished. Jesus is saying that atonement, the work that I had to do for your atonement, it's finished, it's completely done. I'm never going to be revisiting that again. I'm never going to be crucified again. Think about that. All the work for your eternal salvation has been completed. It is finished by Jesus Christ. He didn't die and then go into hell and complete the work for your salvation there. That is a heresy. It is finished. Jesus did the work. He finished the work that he was sent to do. You and I need to know that. And I wanted to share this also on video because when it comes to these, you know, the, the graphics here and the colors and all, I, I thought, you know, some people are asking for this. It's much easier to get this when you see it than versus just hearing this. So check this out. If you were to ask a question, in the Old Testament time, once the law and the Old Covenant was established, how did people get to heaven? How did they get rid of their sins? How were they saved from the fires of hell? Well, I'll tell you how. It was through the Old Covenant. Salvation was possible for every person only through the Old Covenant. Everyone was kept under the law. You can read about that in Galatians 3, verses 22 through 25. So all of that, the law is my schoolmaster, my teacher, to lead me to who? To lead me to Christ, is what Paul 
rights. And so everything was a foreshadowing, everything and everyone was waiting until the time that Christ Jesus died on the cross after fulfilling everything for your eternal salvation, doing all the work and the only one who could do the work, just like a picture of the Old Testament's high priest as our great high priest, Jesus Christ, cried out from the cross, it is finished. And when he poured out his blood, he created at that moment the new covenant. And so God's only acceptable sin sacrifice, Christ Jesus, he fulfilled Torah. He died for your sins. We just read the scripture as John being an eyewitness to that. And his blood was poured out again as John saw a witness to that. He knows his testimony is true, white, that you may believe. And Jesus cried out, it is finished, John 19. Now, just like when you go to the mall and you got the red dot on the map, you are here. You and I are now living in this new covenant time. The only way that salvation for every single human being could be possible is only through this new covenant that Christ Jesus attained and maintains for you and I. The old covenant is now invalid for salvation. That's how to get to heaven, version 1.0. Hebrews chapters 8 verse 13 and chapter 10 verses 8 through 14. You could read those that will describe the fact that the old covenant, hey, it's now old. And now there's a new one. Okay, there's only one way to get into heaven now. Only one way to pay for your sins so that you are rescued from the fires of hell and will not spend, even on the chart here, you won't spend the rest of eternity in the second death in the lake of fire, only through Christ Jesus, his death as he poured out his blood to pay for your sins. Now, all works-based salvation is invalid. What is that? Everything except for born-again Christianity. Let me just sum that up in a nutshell. Everything, including modern-day Judaism, is a works-based system. Roman Catholicism, with all its works-based righteousness, can never save anybody. Listen, this is extremely important because we're talking eternity. We're talking burning in the fires of the lake of fire for all eternity. Don't follow the Pope. Don't follow anybody except for Jesus Christ. Works-based salvation, whether through Judaism or Roman Catholicism or Mormonism or the Jehovah's Witnesses, even atheism, that are those things are all workspace. They're all invalid. Wait, what are you talking about? An atheist doesn't believe in a God? Exactly. That's what they think. But in reality, they have a God. Who is it? It's the God of self. Everybody, every single religious system is all false. It's all fake. There's only one way to be saved from the fires of hell. And then in eternity, the lake of fire, only through Christ Jesus, his work that he did and he cried out from the cross it is finished and as he created this new covenant and poured out his blood it's extremely important that every single human being believes this understands this and gives their life to jesus christ so every person will die it's appointed to man to die once and then judgment everybody's going to die and get judged you can read about that in hebrews 9 verse 27 you and i and every human being they're here right now we're here in this new covenant time and hey in the end of time there is going to be what's called the great white throne judgment so every single person who does not have jesus as their savior will be judged at the great white throne judgment you can read about that in revelation 20 verses 11 through 15 all their works will be judged. Everybody's going to have their day in court. They're going to be judged. But hey, the problem is every human was born a sinner into this world of sin, this fallen world. And we all live a life of sin. But Christ Jesus was born sin-free, lived a sinless life, fulfilled the Torah for you and I. It is finished. All the work for salvation was done, sealed by Him and only Him. So there's no way that anybody could do enough work because the problem is we're born sinners. And so all we could do is sin. We have to come to God through Christ Jesus. But the works will be judged. You can read about that in Hebrews 9, 27 and Revelation 20, verse 13. So every single person who does not have Jesus 
Messiah as a payment for their sin, they will have an eternal, listen, it's an eternal and a second death. They're going to die physically once, and they're going to have an eternal physical death. Do not follow modern Judaism. Do not follow Roman Catholicism. Do not follow Mormonism. Do not follow Jehovah's Witnesses. Not even an atheist, agnostic, and anyone or anything. Buddhism, it doesn't matter what you follow. You must follow Jesus Christ to escape this great white throne judgment. And the only way to be saved is through him. He did the work on the cross and then said, it is finished. Praise the Lord for that. And so I'm going to conclude this. Hopefully this has been a blessing to you. The recording didn't catch, so hopefully this on video will help someone out there. Hey, go ahead and share this with others. Uh, hopefully this is going to be a blessing to you in your study and knowledge of God's Word and also in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and remember the work that He did for your eternal salvation. It is finished. Continue to receive His love and share His love with the world. We'll see you soon. God bless you guys.